the How DeMarco Murray does against the Seahawks run defense. Here comes the wild man. So here comes the wild man, Larry Eisenhower. Larry, thank you for coming on. You might not say thank you after I get off. <laughs> All right. What's going on, guys? You know, glad to be here, obviously. So, Larry, you played from 1961 to 1960, uh, 1969. In terms of the game changing from where you were to what it is now, more focusing on the whole player safety initiative that's been taken. What do you what do you see in that? What do you support? What are you against? I didn't realize the game has changed. <laughs> that's a big surprise to me. I didn't know. Uh, player safety, we didn't even know what that was. We never discussed that. And actually it was our intention that when we played then we I was a defensive player, defensive end and my job was to, what's the answer to that question as a defensive end? Tackle, hit the quarterback. Get the quarterback, yeah. the famous word, sack the quarterback. Yeah. So, And uh, that was my favorite thing to do. Yeah. That was the most enjoyable thing I ever did in my life playing football. Yeah. And um, But back in the days that we played, we used to try to take the quarterbacks out of games. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah. You, uh, you were allowed to hit the quarterback any place, yep. um, including the, above his shoulders and hit him in the head. And... Um, but that's what I kind of used to like to do, and I perfected a, a knockout punch, a knockout <laughs> shot, rather, using my shoulder and elbow, and uh, over my career, I put 18 quarterbacks out of games. Yeah. So uh, that was my trademark. So is that where you got the wild man nickname, or did that come from something else? Well, uh, I was a little bit out of control. Um, mostly when I played, I was a guy to play with a lot of enthusiasm, yeah. energy, um, always screaming and yelling, uh, whatever, because it helped me get up for the game. Yeah, absolutely. And when we used to be introduced as a defensive team, um, and typically you would have the opponent's offensive team ready to be introduced uh, alongside you. Know, that Buffalo Bills stadium. Well, just before I used to be introduced, I used to run into the goalpost. I used to get about 10 yards away and run into it as hard as I could two or three times. And the player I was playing over on the opposing team would always just shake his head and say, oh boy, here he is again. What are we going to do? But, uh, you know, things like that, um, being a little bit uh, emotional, that was where I picked up that name. And I was also uh, a wild man off the field, too. But we can't go into that. This is a, uh, a, a family show. All right. Now, yeah. And you definitely had a great career being a defensive end from 61, 69, 45 and a half sacks. That, that's unreal. What do you what was your fondest memory on or off the field uh, during your career? You know, it's, it's very difficult to um, pick out any one thing because so many things happen with all the games and all the years that I played. Uh, the most significant thing for me was um, you know, coming, graduating from Boston College and um, not being a heralded player. Um, I had changed positions my senior year. I asked to move from defensive end, offensive end to defensive tackle and offensive tackle. And um, to get drafted by the Patriots and be able to play for the Patriots, uh, what, I really, what I really remember the most was playing against all the great stars that college all Americans and things like that as I played there in the league and to be able to say wow I can play with these guys you know what I mean that that gave me a lot of confidence a lot of satisfaction so if I had to pick out one thing just to be able to achieve and to be able to play along with the most uh, biggest stars of the day yeah. Yeah. Wow, man, I got a question for you. When you were playing, was there anyone in the league or anyone who you would play who you just could not stand? Like anyone? No. No. When I played, I couldn't stand anybody. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so there was not just one player. But that was part of my game as being a wild man. Yeah. That, um, you know, whoever I was playing against or over or whatever the play was, I would just play 100%. Yeah. Go as hard as it And I would always get myself up for the game, build myself up emotionally. Um, so I wouldn't want to really destroy people when I was out there. So it's lucky I was as little as I was because maybe I would have destroyed more. But a actually when I did play, I was 6'5", 255, which back in those days was a pretty good-sized guy. So. Did you ever have a player who you would get really amped up for playing, like more so than the other games, and really gave you a challenge on the field? Well, they all were good players, and... Um, 
It was the quarterbacks. Uh, the quarterbacks that was probably doing a job to put pressure on them. Because if you get to the quarterback, you change the offense of the other team. And, but, um, you know, there were a lot of great quarterbacks that we played against, uh, like Bob Greasy and Joe Namath and uh, guys that you guys wouldn't remember, but Johnny Hadel and uh, Lenny Dawson, of course, you know him. As a matter of fact, you're probably, you guys are budding Lenny Dawson. He used to do the HBO Network. So you'll be, a, I might see you guys up there someday, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> But yes, uh, you know, players like that, you would always do. They played for good teams. It would make you play a little bit harder. So, was there any player that you, was there any teammate uh, during your career that you really enjoyed playing with, that you always had a good time and like really bonded with? Well, when I played, um, and even today, there's really two teams out there. You have an offense and you have a defense. And you stick together. The defense sticks together. And the offense sticks together. So when you go out or whatever you do, you're always going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with a defensive player. And, and you do stick together. So we were very close. And I was very lucky because in the years that I played with the Patriots, we had a really great defensive line. Um, all four of us were all pro for at least four years each. Uh, we had Bob D., Jimmy Hunt, Houston Antwine. And then we had Nick Bonacani was our middle linebacker. And we had a great all-star uh, named Ronnie Hall, who was a defensive back, who had 27 interceptions, who was a terrific player also. So those guys that I play with on defense, they were my guys that I were close to. And I was a kind of an unruly roommate because every year I would have a different roommate. They couldn't stand it. <laughs> today, today with the Patriots, we talked about this earlier. Their number one yeah. hit, uh, in right. terms of quarterback hits is Look Chandler Jones. He has five quarterback hits this season, which one isn't one. a lot in the scope of the entire you NFL so wait. far this year. What challenges do you see facing the Patriots this year? 23, I need 25. Um, well, the Thank Patriots, God. to me, you're you talking about Chandler you're Jones. That's that's one question, uh, and I'll answer that first. Um, he uh, he has five sacks, and by the way, and he was injured, I think, the last game. And um, you know, he's on track to get probably a, uh, ten sacks a season, which will put him up uh, with the better players. So to be sure, and he, he's a good force, as you know. Over the last five or six years, uh, we haven't had a guy that has consistent pressure from the defensive line that uh, as Chandler Jones has done. Um, so I, I think he's got a great career ahead of him. And um, I think he stays healthy. He'll be one of the better ends around here. Um, as far as um, where are the Patriots today? I don't really can't answer that question because I don't know if they have an identity yet. Because we've seen them at their best, as in last week, and we've seen them at their worst when they played Kansas City. So who are they? And I think today will be an answer to that question because Buffalo, obviously a tie for first place, they're doing very well. Um, I'm a little disappointed that uh, Kyle Orton's playing today because he certainly is a proven quarterback and will do a much better job than Emmanuel, who had played before him, who was still a rookie and learning. So I think having Orton in there is going to make Buffalo even a tougher team than they had before. They got some great players, and they got a good offense and defense. So if the Patriots can come out of this with a win, um, I think it will go a lot along with saying where they're going to be the rest of the year. Larry, we're all obviously familiar with the controversy surrounding the Washington Redskins. I just wanted to get your thoughts. Do you think they should change your name or the Washington Redskins? Or? Just a quick stat about that. 10% of NFL fans find the name Redskins. 10%? Yeah, yeah. I got 750 there. Who wants to go I got 750,000 there. Yeah, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'll just say this. I played in the 60s. I don't believe in political correctness at all. Okay. 
So I don't believe in any type of name change or anything. I don't think it's to insult anybody to put them down. I remember reading a, a thing out on the line the other day about just about half the teams that play sports, you could say, offend somebody with their name. So, uh, you know, to me it's a little silly and a little ridiculous, but uh, where is it going to end? I don't know. So I hope they don't change their name. And I listened the other day when I watched the Redskins play, and they still call them the Redskins, and I hope they continue to do that. Uh, shifting couple. gears a little bit. Commissioner I got 22 5 now. Looking for 25. 22 5 looking for 25. 22 5 once. For the Still need 25 22 the, uh, 5 twice. Recent looking for 2500. Once. Twice. Policies. In terms so, of. So, right there for 22 5. If I have to teach Thank my you. technique to you, well, you got to. Point it at who, the person. This, guy? this is T.J. Horgan. Oh no, who are you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know who T.J. Horgan is. Who's that guy anyway? In in turn, that yeah, that's that's Jimmy Young. He, he helps out a little bit occasionally, you know. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, back to uh, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's typical, uh, like I talk about political correctness, uh, right. Roger Goodell is a very effective commissioner, and, um, you know, what is the right way to handle anything? Right. Everybody looks post-fact, yeah. and is always a complaint, he didn't do this, or that guy didn't do this, or this woman didn't do that, right and correct. Nobody can get everything perfect that's going to please everybody, so I think he's a very effective commissioner. Um, um, I you know, hope this, this doesn't uh, just blacken his record or anything like that. Right. And we all learn as we move along, and of course he's learning too as he goes along too. And you've got to remember, he doesn't make these decisions by himself. He has, I think, as a committee of two or three of the owners that he consults with before he does or say anything. So, with that being said, I don't think all the blame or whatever you want to say, derogatory comments about Roger Goodell, that he should accept himself. Yeah. Wow. Larry, so thank you very much for being here. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you very I, much. I uh, wish you guys all the best in your careers. And uh, like I said earlier, I look forward to seeing you on national television. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Wow, man. <laughs> All right, so a, a great discussion there with Larry. All right. right. Larry Wildman Eisenhower, I got to say, when I was asking him that first question, he, he grabbed the mic from me. No way I was going back in for that mic again <laughs> until the end of that. Hey, when you're nicknamed a Wildman, it's best to just back yeah, off. Yeah, absolutely. Uh,